Hello, I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. Today we're going to be talking about hypocrisy in the church. Wow. Every one of us knows some, but Jesus tells us, you know, in the New Testament, some hypocrites that were in the day, in His day. And we're going to talk about that and then what a hypocrite is. First of all, <clears throat> there were four religions in the day of Jesus that He called hypocrites. One of them was a Pharisee. Pharisees mean to separate. They believed and taught strict separation. They were zealous about the law and very legalistic. They were held in a high esteem by the people. So the Pharisees, you know, I heard someone say one time when you're talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Pharisees You'd say, I'm fair, you see. And the Sadducees were, I'm sad, you see, because they don't believe in a resurrection. But let's, let's find out now about a Sadducee. That's the other religion of the day. It means righteous, being righteous. They were not as strict as the Pharisees, and uh, they added some of the Greek culture to their uh, teachings and to their belief. They did not believe in the supernatural power from God. They did not believe in the resurrection. Now, those are two things that could cause them to be sad, you see. And uh, they were wealthy Jews and uh, very smart, but they did not have the influence on the people as the Pharisees did. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and the next religion was the scribes. Scribes. They were, in the beginning, like a secretary to the king. Uh, they interpreted the scriptures to the people. They wrote the word of God down, just like a secretary would. And uh, people looked at them and even called them rabbi and uh, master. And they held great sway over the people. And they were, they were closely uh, in tune with the Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees, you'll find that they were together a lot in, in the Bible. And the fourth one was the Herodians. Herodians. They believed you could uh, compromise with the world and serve God. They were not thought of as highly as the Pharisees or Sadducees, but they were a religion of that day. These men upheld the Word of God. <laughs> they, they taught the people. That's what they did. They were the only ones at that time that were ministering the Word of God to the people. But Jesus said to beware of them. Interesting, isn't it? He said, beware of them. So let's go to Matthew 16, verse 6. And uh, this is when Jesus said unto His disciples, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Leaven there uh, means something is wrong with it. It's corrupt bread, sourdough. So he said, beware, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, and it means something is wrong there. And verse 12 says, uh, Then understood they how he bade them not be aware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So he wanted you to be, they wanted them to be aware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So we as Spirit-filled people here in the Word of God must be careful about uh, what we hear and what we put into our heart. Uh, we must be careful of becoming religious because we can become religious in our minds, but not in our hearts. Let's go to Luke 11. Luke 11. <clears throat> Luke 11, 35. Jesus said, Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. And then go down to verse 39. He said, And the Lord said unto them, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening, ravening and wickedness? Whoo, I wouldn't want to be told that, would you? Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. 
Now let's go to Luke, back uh, to Luke, uh, or over one chapter, to Luke 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable uh, multitude of people, insomuch that they trod upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, <laughs> Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There he goes with that word again. He's warning them about them saying that there is something wrong. There's, there's something, you need to take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Don't become a hypocrite. Now, these were great men of God and they, they were not drunkards. They weren't uh, murderers or adulterers, but Jesus called them hypocrites. Where did the word hypocrite come from? Interesting. The Greek culture, in the Greek culture, the hypocrites were play actors. We would call them in this day and time movie stars or, or movie actors. Uh, they would take masks and place it before them and speak in another voice and uh, people would not recognize them. They pretended to be what they were not. Jesus took that word and applied it to the religion, uh, religious man of that day. He said, they're hypocrites. They're pretending to be something that they're not. Beware of that. Don't let that happen to you. He said to them, you have the word of God, but all you have produced is hypocrisy. You are pretending to be what you are not. Now, Webster's Dictionary says a hypocrite is an actor. Interesting, isn't it? One who affects virtues or qualities he does not have. And also hypocrisy is the act of playing a part on the stage. To answer, a feigning to be what is, one is not or believe uh, to be what one does not. And it's a false assumption of an appearance of virtue or religion. And so I know the first time I learned that was years ago. We had a guy here that, or a man here from California, and he used to be a, a movie star, not really well known. He did a lot of parts, you know, in movies, but uh, he's the one that said, told us what a hypocrite was. And I was just blown away. I said, I had no idea that that's what a hypocrite was. That he, and you look it up in, in Webster's Dictionary, and it'll tell you a hypocrite is an actor, one who affects virtues or qualities he does not have. Interesting, I think. Now, we can take the Word of God and not be what we seem to others. One way at church, another way at home. And uh, you change your voice at church, pretending to be what you are not. There's a lot of that going on in the church today, and I know husbands and wives know that. You know, they, they come to church and everybody, they seem to be so wonderfully in love and a happy family. And really, in reality, they're not. And uh, they, you know, one of them or both of them uh, is a, a tyrant to live with. And so that would be what we would call a hypocrite. They're play acting. They're, they're acting like there's something they're not. So we need to be aware of that. Actually, uh, they you change your voice at church uh, to be pretending to be what you're not. Now, we have two sides. We have an inside, which our, is our spirit man, and an outside, which is our flesh. And people only see the outside and can get really carried away with it. They get wrapped up on the outside. Clothes you wear, your jewelry, uh, your charismatic personality rather than character. We, we, we see that a lot these days. <clears throat> now let's go back to Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 18 and 19. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, 
murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemy. Blasphemies. Now, now let's go to Matthew 23, chapter 23, <clears throat> verse uh, 27 and 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones. Whoo, this is Jesus talking. And all uncleanness, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto man, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Dear Lord, that is a terrible thing for the Lord Jesus to be saying about you. And he's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians. And I'm telling you what, they, he lets you know that though in, from the Word of God to beware of them because of what they're teaching, it's not in their heart and they didn't want you to hear it and it not be in your heart either. Now, some of the outward sins, when you read the Word of God, you'll find out is uh, the outward sins could be drunkenness, murder, gossip, uh, adultery, fornication. Those things are the outward sins. Now, the inward sins would be resentment, bitterness, strife, hatred. They are all just as deadly, though, as the outward you, you know, you may be a drunkard, and uh, but you might say, well, but I'm, I don't have hate in my heart, or I don't have these other things, but, but it's just as deadly as a person who has hatred in their heart. It's the outward sins and the inward sins. Now let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5, verses 20 through 22. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, notice that, scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse uh, 21, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whatever, and whosoever thou shalt kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that if who, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. My goodness gracious, that is something else, isn't it? Now let's go down to 27 and 28. <clears throat> you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, and this is Jesus talking, if you look in your Bible, it's in red writing. But I say unto you that whoso looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we got to watch those things. You have to watch the outward sins as well as the inward. Now, religion uh, of that day had deteriorated to outward appearances, and uh, people wanted to be just like them, just like the Pharisees, just like the Sadducees, the scribes, the Herodians. They wanted to be like them more than Jesus. And, uh, but so many, and you know, you find in this day and age that so many people read books uh, about the Bible, but they don't read the Bible. They'll read a book about the Bible. That's not good. We need to read the Bible. Now, you need to read the books about the Bible, but I'm telling you what, you need to get into the Bible. That's where your Word of God is concerned. That's how He communicates with you. Now, God requires uh, more than acting right or appearing to be spiritual. You must go beyond that and change on the inside. When you change on the inside, you please God. Changing on the outside may please your husband, but 
you know, and your friends, but change it on the inside pleases God. And that's what you need to do. You need to please God. The inward you. So let's read Matthew 15. Matthew 15. I'm going on through a lot of scriptures here. Matthew 15, uh, 7 and 8. He said, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, prophesy of you saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Wow, that is something else, isn't it? I wouldn't want to be there. And in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So God doesn't want you saying things and doing things that's not in your heart. He wants, it, he wants your insides more than your outside. You get your inside right, then your outside will line up. You're doing and saying the right things, but your heart is far from God. And, uh, you know, sometimes people will sing and they'll preach and they'll do all kinds of things, and, uh, but they, it's not in their heart. And, and they're just doing it because that's what they're supposed to do. But uh, look at the, look, be careful what goes into your heart. Be careful what you watch, what you see, what you read. Be careful what's going into your life. If he has our heart, he has us. I think that's a wonderful thought. Now let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. No, I mean Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Oh, uh, 16, 9. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Now, he finishes by saying, Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. But the part I want you to see here is that first part. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward them. Now, that perfect there means mature. It's a mature heart. It's mature with the Word of God. And so that's what, you, when he says you can have a perfect heart, that's what he's talking about. It's a mature heart. Um, now the heart with, heart, with the heart man believes and not with the mouth. You can go broke, quote in scriptures, if you're, if it's not, if the saying is not in your heart. And I've heard people say that, you know. Uh, I don't know why I don't have it. I have confessed the word and said the word, but you know, in their heart, they don't believe it. You've got to believe it. Um, now, we find that the Pharisees did everything that was right, but their hearts were far from God. And so, you don't want your heart to be far from God. You want your heart to be close to Him, and He will hear you and bless you. Now, Second Chronicles 25.2 uh, says, and he did that. We're talking about Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I think that's interesting. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. And we find, and let's go to First Kings now. First Kings 3, 6. Oh, let me see. Is that what I want? Uh, yeah. First Kings 3, 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, uprightness of heart. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, 
that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. So we see that David did wrong in the sight of the Lord, but his heart was toward God. He repented of his sins and said in Psalms 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And God said that he was a man after his own heart. That would bless me, wouldn't it you? Now let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 4, verse 23. And he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And that keep there means guard, like a prison would, would guard a gate. You guard your heart. You keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You must keep your heart with all diligence. Now let's go to the New Testament, to Matthew 12. Matthew 12, uh, 34 through 37. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. You got to watch what comes out of your mouth, I'm telling you. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. My, my, my. Now, how do you believe in your heart? You can quote the scriptures 25 times and not get healed. Why? Because it's not in your heart. You got to believe what you're saying will come to pass. No word comes out but just fear. So ask God to put a new heart in you and begin to study the Scripture diligently. Do things unto God with a pure heart. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 6 and 7. Ephesians 6, 6 and 7. Uh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. There's that heart again. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So it's not with eye service that you're doing this. You're doing it unto God. Now let's go over to Colossians 3, just a chapter or two. Colossians 3, 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. You got to do it unto the Lord. Do it heartily. And then let's go to uh, Hebrews, the uh, 10th chapter, verse 22. 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So we need to draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith. And then lastly, we've got Matthew 23. Let's go back to Matthew 23, 1 through 4. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works. For they say, and they do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So I tell you what, he doesn't want you listening to what they're doing, what they're saying. Hypocritical religion brings you into bondage, but true religion sets you free. Thanks be to God, you have been made free 
to do the will of God. It's not burden, burdensome and it's not grievous. Just line up your will to His will. And I tell you what, He will bless you, He will minister to you, and He will be there for you. He is a wonderful God. Always remember in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. All I could think to say was get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 1-888-641-3375 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Stir up your spirit and refresh your soul with Jeannie Caldwell's album, Colors, with songs like Didn't Think It Could Be. I didn't think it could be till it happened to me. And My Father. I want to be more like him. You're sure to be refreshed every time you listen. Colors is just $14 plus shipping and handling. To get your copy, visit our website at vtntv.com or call 1-888-641-3375. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email her at Caldwell at vtntv.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-888-641-3375 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet in His presence.